Okay, so um, we're going to talk about a partial sum of an arithmetic sequence. So say you have a sequence and you just want to add up like the first 15 terms. You want to know the sum of the first 15 terms. Well, we have a way to do that. Okay, so the story is told of a famous mathematician, Gauss, and he was like in elementary school and his teacher, um, I think, wanted to give him some busy work and said, go add up the numbers from 1 to 100. And uh, he thought that would take Gauss like a long time to do. And Gauss quickly saw a pattern and he was able to find the answer really quickly. Um, okay, so we're going to show you kind of where that pattern comes from. So we know if we have a sum or a sequence of terms, right? If we have the first term, then the next term we're adding d, and then the next term we're adding 2d, and the next term we're adding 3d. And I'm not going to keep going, right? All right, so if we had the sum, and for sum we're going to use an s of n terms, then we could say that's going to equal um, So a sub 1 plus a sub 1 plus d plus a sub 1 plus 2d plus, and then until you get to, we didn't put the last term, a sub n, right? a sub n. Okay. Now, what if we went the other way, though? What if we said, well, I'm not going to start with the first term and keep adding. I'm going to start with the last term and subtract the d. So I could rewrite this as, this would be a sub n, and then the next term would be a sub n. Well, let me, not, let me write that differently. That's going to look confusing if I write it that way. Um, start with a sub n, the last term, and then the next term would be, or the previous term would be a sub n plus, I'm sorry, minus, minus d, right? you got to subtract the um, common difference. And then you'd have a sub n minus 2d, and then a sub n minus 3d, and you'd keep doing that till you got to the first term, a sub 1. Okay, so you could do that. You have a set amount of terms that you're using, so you could start at the beginning and keep adding the common difference till you get to the end, or you can start at the end and then subtract the difference till you get to the first one, right? To get the terms. We're just getting the terms, right? They don't have to be in a particular order because we're just going to add them up. Okay. So you could also say the sum of n terms, looking at this bottom one, is a sub n plus a sub n minus d plus a sub n minus 2d plus and then keep going until you get to the last term, a sub 1, okay? So you might have to rewind the video and watch that a little bit. That might be a little confusing, but hopefully not. Now, what can I add the two equations? Yes, we learned we could add equations. And so what's Sn plus Sn? 2Sn. And then what's happening? You all, you get a sub 1 plus a sub n, right? And then what happens with the d's here? Those cancel out. And you get another a sub 1 plus a sub n. And then what happens here? Those, the 2d minus 2d cancels out. So you get a sub 1 plus a sub n. Plus, and then it keeps going in that pattern until you get to the last part, which is a sub 1 plus a sub n. Okay, so I guess the question is, how many of those do you have? Well, you have n, see, they're all a plus 1 plus n, right? They're all the same thing. You have n of them. And so 2s sub n is equal to n times a sub 1 plus a sub n. But we don't want to know what 2s sub n is. We just want to know s sub n. So divide by 2. And you get this formula. So you don't have to be able to find the formula, but here it is. It's where it comes from. Now you know. It, the formula is n times a sub 1 plus a sub n over 2. So that's the formula we're using for the sum of n terms in an arithmetic sequence. So you can find the sum of the first 100 terms. It's going to be 50 times 101. It's going to be like 5,050, I think, if I remember right. Okay. 
Oh, <laughs> so, well, they had a little bit different sequence for us. This is not the first 100 terms. Example five, find the sum of the 100 terms, I think they mean the first 100 terms, but of the arithmetic sequence one, three, five, seven. Okay, so first you'd have to find the 100th term, right? Because we don't know that. So we need to find a sub 100. And we can do that. We can use our formula, our general formula. We'll make a general formula here. Um, a sub n is going to equal the first term, 1, plus n minus 1 times. Now what's the d here? 2? Yeah, you're adding 2 every time. Okay, so d is 2. All right, so if I want to find a sub 100, that's going to equal 1 plus 100 minus 1 times 2, which is 1 plus 99 times 2, um, which is 1 plus 198. Yes. Okay, and that's going to be 199. <laughs> okay, so that's a sub, that's the hundredth term then. You're going to be adding these up. So you know the first term now. And we were adding 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus, and we're going to the hunt to 199. That would be the hundredth term. Okay, so now we're going to use our new formula, s of n equals n times a sub 1 plus a sub n over 2. Um, sometimes they'll write that as n over 2 times a sub 1 plus a sub n, but I think I usually see it the other way. All right, so we're going to add up the first 100 terms in this sequence. So we'll say s sub 100. It's going to be 100. The first term is 1. The last term is 199. And then we're dividing that all by 2. So I get 50, because 2 goes into 100, times 200. And because 1 plus 199. OK, and what is that? Uh, 10 with three zeros, 10,000. So if you took the first 100 odd numbers, starting at 1, and you added them all up, you'd get 10,000. That's a pretty big number.